I accidentally overdosed the other day. Took too much Viagra was the hardest day of my life. Today, I'm going to recap a 1993 crime drama film called A Bronx Tale. The narrative starts in 1960 in the Bronx, within a blue-collar Italian-American district. A gentleman named Lorenzo drives a bus to support his spouse Rosina and their young son Caligero, who is nine. Caligero is captivated by the mafia and underworld operations in his area. On a certain day, after Lorenzo leaves his son at their residence, Calagero covertly heads to a pub owned by mobsters, where Sonny, a mafia figure, and his associates gather. Calagero proceeds to describe the patrons inside. While the pub is owned by Tony Tupi, it's widely known that the real power holder is Sonny. Jimmy Whispers, who earned his nickname due to his discreet nature, is Sonny's main man. Unexpectedly, Calagero's mother pulls him out, reprimanding him for his actions. Upon Lorenzo's return from his job, he admonishes Caligero, cautioning him to steer clear of the establishment. Lorenzo hopes for his son to lead an upright life, unlike the gangsters. The following morning, Caligero and his pals, Slick and Mario, mimic Sonny's crew, observing a dispute. Slick becomes infuriated when a bus with black passengers passes, and despite Caligero's attempt to placate him, Slick chases the bus, shouting racial slurs. Observing this, a concerned Lorenzo summons Caligero. Meanwhile, Caligero witnesses a violent altercation involving Sonny's crew member. As things escalate, Sonny fires at and ultimately kills an aggressor. Recognizing the danger, Lorenzo quickly grabs his son, taking him to safety. The police swiftly arrive, informing Lorenzo of Caligero's proximity to the event, hoping he'd identify the shooter. During the lineup, Caligero doesn't identify Sonny, claiming no shots came from the group. Later, Caligero seeks validation from his father, who suggests that Caligero's action was kind, albeit for a wicked person. The subsequent day, when Lorenzo drops off his son, he perceives a nod of acknowledgement from Sonny. Sonny's main aide enters the bus, appreciative of Caligero's loyalty. He proposes a lucrative position to Lorenzo, who declines, wanting no part in their illegal enterprises. The following day, as Calagero mends his bicycle, he's ushered to the pub by one of Sonny's men. Recognizing potential, Sonny employs Calagero to serve at the bar, where the young lad quickly earns generous tips. Later, during a gambling session, Sonny beckons Calagero to participate. When Calagero achieves 11 straight passes, he wins a hefty amount for Sonny. Following the game, Calagero receives a generous tip from Sonny, who then christens him with the moniker C. Sonny begins treating C akin to his own offspring. As rumors spread about their camaraderie, C notices a change in the neighborhood's demeanor towards him, witnessing newfound respect. On an occasion when C stops to purchase fruit, the vendor gifts him peaches, turning down C's payment and mentioning Sonny's instructions to look after him. Subsequently, Lorenzo and Rosina stumble upon C's accumulated money, questioning its origin. Learning about C's association with Sonny, Lorenzo visits the pub to give back the money. Despite Rosina's protests regarding their financial needs, Lorenzo insists on returning the cash, cautioning Sonny to distance himself from Calogero. Sonny, however, clarifies that the money is for C's benefit. Directing C to leave the room, Sonny then communicates his respect for Lorenzo, but reprimands him for his audacity. Lorenzo expresses concerns about the materialistic allure that surrounds Sonny, fearing its impact on C. He pleads with Sonny to avoid contact with his son, which agitates the gangster, resulting in a heated warning. En route home, a disgruntled C demands his money, and in the ensuing argument, Lorenzo reprimands him with a slap. C confronts Lorenzo, criticizing his work ethic and siding with Sonny's worldview. Lorenzo, however, emphasizes the nobility of honest labor and the integrity it entails. He apologizes for the slap, reassuring C that maturity will bring understanding. Fast forward seven years, and adult C is at the racetrack alongside Sonny and the crew. They bet on a favored horse, Kryptonite. However, when an ill-fated better enters, rooting for the same horse, Sonny intuitively discards his tickets, predicting a loss. C, curious about the race's outcome, lingers and witnesses their horse's defeat. Later, C and his friends form a social group, 
Deuces Wild, which becomes their regular hangout. Tensions arise when a car with black passengers drives by. While C downplays their presence, his mates argue about the newcomer's audacity to venture into their territory. Lorenzo pulls up in his bus, beckoning C to hop in. He excitedly mentions a boxing match he's considering for the next day. However, C's attention is captivated by a girl in the distance, making him oblivious to his father's words. Subsequently, C identifies a man, Louis, who owes him money. As he pursues Louis, Sani intercepts him, seeking clarity on the situation. Sani emphasizes to C the potential ramifications of inflicting harm for trivial reasons, like the $20 debt. Acknowledging the wisdom in Sonny's words, C admires him for his insight. Sonny, in return, recounts his prison days, implying he's made his share of mistakes. He introduces C to Machiavelli's writings and speaks about the importance of being accessible and staying connected to one's roots. Sonny advocates for being vigilant about personal and family interests. Later, a motorcycle gang, poorly dressed, enters Sonny's pub, initially resisted by Sonny's assistant. However, Sonny allows them service. Trouble brews when the gang starts mistreating the bartender. Sonny locks them in, signaling the dire situation they've landed in. Subsequently, Sonny's crew bursts in, overpowering and disciplining the misbehaving guests. On another occasion, C and his group encounter a gun dealer showcasing firearms. Witnessing this, an incensed Sonny confronts them, especially taking issue with the gun dealer's recklessness. He reprimands everyone but C, emphasizing the dangers of associating with such people. Sani admonishes C, asserting that genuine strength isn't derived from weapons or bad company. In a twist of fate, C encounters the girl he's been eyeing, elatedly discovering they share a school. Prioritizing her over his usual crowd, he fabricates an excuse to converse with her. The duo strike up a conversation, during which C learns her name's Jane they plan a movie outing. Later, as C and his friends relax, they'd witness black individuals cycling nearby. While his friends express disdain, C advocates for peace. This newfound stance perplexes Slick, who wonders about C's shifting sentiments. Soon after, Slick strikes one of the black youths, prompting the rest of his gang to jump in. C, while appearing to join in the attack, discreetly advises one of the victims to stay down to avoid further harm. Witnessing the fracas, Sonny is irate, advising Seed to distance himself from his rambunctious friends, predicting their grim fates. When C later seeks Sonny's counsel about romancing a black girl, Sonny's open-minded response takes him aback. Sonny emphasizes the importance of personal happiness and mutual feelings over societal expectations. Sonny then offers his car for C's date, but introduces the door test to gauge Jane's character. Seeking more guidance, C presents a hypothetical scenario to Lorenzo about dating outside their race. Lorenzo, while not harboring ill feelings towards black individuals, firmly believes in staying within one's own ethnic group. C challenges this viewpoint, hinting at his own romantic inclinations, but Lorenzo remains resolute in his stance. During C's date with Jane, she reveals her brother's recent altercation with Italians, probing if C had a role in it. An identification game ensues when Jane's brother, present at the scene, points out C as one of the assailants. In a fit of anger, C hurls a racial slur, instantly regretting it as Jane storms off. Upon returning the car to Sani, C provides a vague reason for the short date. Subsequently, Lorenzo chastises C for using Sonny's vehicle and further advises him to steer clear of the bar. C retorts, highlighting Sonny's trust in him, only to be met with Lorenzo's skepticism about Sonny's trustworthiness. Lorenzo differentiates between fear and respect, implying that Sonny is more feared than respected. C, defensively, belittles his father's profession. That evening, their hangout spot is vandalized. While C's group is plotting a counterattack, Sonny intervenes, dispersing the crowd. Anger is palpable as Sonny confronts C, inquiring about his whereabouts with the car, revealing its potential deadly cargo. C, distressed, affirms his respect and affection for Sonny, likening him to a father figure. When Lorenzo tries to investigate the disturbance, he is unexpectedly floored with a punch. 
As he retreats, Sonny admonishes him to be careful with his words. Meanwhile, C encounters his gang, armed with firebombs, planning vengeance. Hesitantly, C joins but internally grapples with leaving without appearing weak. Their car halts at a traffic signal, and Sonny aggressively insists C exit. When Slick tries to pacify Sonny, he is met with a violent head thrust to the car's dashboard. Before departing, Sonny sternly warns the group to steer clear of C. Back at the bar, an associate informs C of a recent visitor, Jane. Rushing out, he reunites with her, who shares her newfound knowledge of his protective gesture towards her brother. Their bond deepens with a mutual kiss. As C revels in Jane's gesture of unlocking his door from inside the car, an alarming realization hits him about Slick's impending danger. Meanwhile, Slick's gang rakes havoc in a predominantly black area, firing at will and hurling firebombs. A failed firebomb is thrown back, detonating their stockpile, resulting in a fatal blast. Arriving at the scene, C is met with the grim sight of his friend's lifeless bodies, leading to a whirlwind of emotions. Returning to the bar, C stumbles upon a bustling party. Navigating through the throng, he spots a sinister-looking individual advancing towards Sonny. His warning cry comes too late as Sonny is fatally shot by the vengeful son of a man that Sonny had murdered in C's presence. At Sonny's memorial service, C is disturbed by the attendee's indifference, finding solace in his solitary farewell. His solitude is interrupted by Carmen, who introduces himself as the new overseer of the territory. He extends an offer of support, referencing Sonny's commendation of C. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.